Okay. All right, we'll give everybody uh, some time to jump on. Please say hi. Um, I did post this uh, to the page. I know we were, uh, we were doing a little bit in Nehemiah, and I thought this would uh, go well with that understanding. And so I thought we would talk a little bit about character today. Uh, not only our own character, but what is our responsibility when it comes to others? What is our responsibility when it comes to supporting people uh, and those kind of things? Um, that, that always has to be held up uh, to the understanding that God has given us. And so... You know, it's interesting that people will uh, sidestep those things and, uh, you know, if they like someone, they will overlook these things or if uh, they've been con conditioned in some way to uh, hate another group, it doesn't matter who's in charge of their group, uh, they're just fine. And um, so we're going to talk about that today and I think it's important and I think that... Um, you know, as God's people, uh, we have a lot to answer for. We have a lot to answer for. And, you know, God's judgment comes comes on all his people, especially when they uh, walk against him. So I will just uh, say, uh, you know, I was going through this and uh, doing a lot of, uh, you know, soul searching and, and, and praying about this and... Uh, so anyway, I thought uh, this would be appropriate uh, for today. Um, we have a few minutes. Uh, let's do this. Um, let's give everybody a few more minutes to jump on. All right. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, character. Character. So stay tuned. And uh, we'll give us another couple of minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. Uh, Good morning, ladies. How are we? Good morning, good morning. Okay. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Uh, we will... A couple more minutes here and we're going to get started. Uh, I think this is important. And, and, and I think it, you know, when evaluating character, um, it's, we need to note and understand that th this reflects, like, who we are. And things that we're willing to overlook and excuse, I mean, um, I've gotten so many calls from people uh, that are just 
you know, they don't know what to do. Uh, I'll, I'll relate it to you um, when we get started. Um, it, it's amazing to me that, you know, we turn a blind eye to things and then when they're going to happen, then people start getting upset. And I'm just, you know, I'm just like, it's amazing to me. It's amazing. Anyway, that was, it's incredible. Anyway, well, we'll go forward and we'll see how this goes. Uh, I did post this on the page, so if you would like to have a copy of it, um, what I've done is I pulled a whole bunch of uh, verses about character. And so uh, we're going to see the reflective nature, you know, in Scripture that tells us about, you know, what character and, and what that says about us. Um, and also what it says about our relationship with God. You know, I mean, ultimately, that's what everything is always about, isn't it? So, anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right in this morning. And we'll let everyone that comes on afterwards. But uh, let's dive in. Let's dive in. And then uh, we'll... Uh, go forward from there. Let us go ahead and pray. Father, we do. We thank you so much, Lord, that we can come together as your people, Lord, to hear your message, to hear your word, to understand what it says, that it, and plant that within our hearts so that we may use it when times of need. Lord, help us to understand there are consequences for all our decisions, not just for us, but for all those around us. Not just for us, but with our relationship to you and how it it hurts or helps that relationship when we follow the things that you've told us to hold fast to and how it degrades that when we shy away from those things because we ourselves think we know better. So Father, we'd ask that you would bless this time, bless all those that are here or that will be here, and may everything always be about you. And it is in Christ's name that we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen. All right, so, um, when we start talking about character, all right, let's do that. So, if we had to explain what character is, I'll give you a couple of definitions that kind of will help us to understand that. So, character, the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. So character is the things within us that make us who we are, all right? Some people will hide who they truly are. And, you know, and then we can be, we can be surprised. We can be surprised, <laughs> you know, when, when we see who they truly are. But what do we do when we know who they are? And then we're shocked when they do exactly what they said they're going to do. All right. <laughs> Let me give you another definition of character. The particular combination of qualities in someone or something that makes them who they are and different from everyone else. So God tells us we are to be of a certain quality, a certain character, right? And he gives us and shows us his attributes, and he says, this, this is who you should be. Are we going to be perfect? No. Should we be close? Yes. Yes. And too many people will, you know, sidestep or look past all the... the the, the shortfallings of people if they agree on one issue. And that's where we run into problems. That's where we run into problems. Because we, like everything else, we take things as a whole. 
we look at things about the big picture a house is going to affect everyone, right? Instead of one issue. Good morning, Julie. How are you? Instead of one issue. So character are the things and the qualities that are distinctive to an individual. They also are a particular combination of those things in someone. I always say one thing. Look, listen, uh, everyone can be surprised by someone now and then. But if somebody comes out and tells you exactly who they are and then acts like that, you should not be surprised should not be surprised right let's go over to pro now i'm going to give you all these and the reason we're you know we're talking about this in, in twofold understanding number one nehemiah all right which we did last week nehemiah he was beside himself about what had happened to his country right and it, and the devastation that happened and what god showed him was you took part in this this is because of you and your decision to not speak up, to not do the right thing, to go against what you knew that I said, and therefore the judgment came upon the city and God executed the judgment, just like he always will. And so the devastation that was caused, right? And if you haven't read Nehemiah, go in there and read. We did chapter one last week. Read chapter two where he's saying, the whole place is a wreck, it's all been burnt down. You know, he comes to the understanding that is his lack of character that contributed to the downfall. Okay. So we are responsible, right? And as God's people, we are absolutely obligated and responsible to make sure that whoever we have that we support, whether it's our pastor, our local politicians, uh, the federal government, uh, people in the world, whoever we are whoever we are supporters of should have character and the character of God, right? Proverbs 27, 19. As in water, face reflects water. So the heart of man reflects man. What's in their heart? What do they strive after? Is it power, prestige, fame, money, their own way? no humbleness, soothing their own ego. You know, those are all attributes that we as Christians should be uh, running away from. Running away from. Because that's what's in their heart. And so there is no understanding of doing what's right for people, doing what's right for, you know, it's interesting because I had a, I had a lady and I read a couple stories this week about this. And, and uh, so there's a lady that... Um, she called me up and she was, she was kind of upset. And she says, um, uh, you know, I don't understand. Uh, there might not be any services for my autistic son next year. She said, I just went to the, I just went to the, uh, the meeting and they said there might not be any services uh, because they're planning on making huge cuts or eliminating the, uh, you know, Department of Education. And I said, yeah, that's what they were saying from day one. Well, I didn't know that was going to affect me and my, and my special needs son. Oh, interesting, interesting. Psalm 1-1, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Is it about trying to solve problems or just about complaining? Is it pinning all the blame on one group or people or getting down to work and doing what's right for the whole and what's good for everyone? Because we are all part of one another, right? So when we support people that push hate, why should we be surprised when that hate comes back to us? We should not be. We should not be. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 and 2. Be imitators of me, just as I also am imitators of Christ. 
I praise you because you remember me in everything and hold firmly to the traditions just as I delivered them to you. How do we deliver things to people? How we act, what we show, what we do, what we do, what we don't do, right? That's how we do. What Paul is saying, I was among you. I taught you. I, te- I you know, I was there with you. I struggled with you. We did these things together. You hold fast to the that belief structure. Love God, love others, be there for, for people, right? Not hate and drive them away. See, what we have to realize is that what we're dealing with is a moral issue. It's a moral issue. You know, the, the, when we start seeing these things come to pass, right? When we start actually experiencing these things, there's going to be a lot of regret. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, this is not what I intended. Well, when you don't pick people that have character, you get exactly this thing that we're going to be living through. First John 2, verses 3 and 4 By this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. We should be able to look at somebody and say, they care about people. They love people. They're trying to do the right thing. Are we going to agree with them 100%? Absolutely not. But if we have somebody that we see that lies right to your face, who manipulates, who is always trying to, you know, his, his goal or their goal is for money, right? Uh, they, they're selling wares. They're, they're, you know, they're trying to take advantage of situations. They're constantly asking for money. What does that tell you about the heart of those people, right? It should tell you everything you need to know. Second Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from every brother who leads an unruly life and not according to the tradition which you received from us. Who are they? What are they doing? Unruly life. Is there chaos? Is there division? Is there hate? Is there bigotry? These are all things that are failures of character, and that we do not need to be supporting those people. In fact, those are the people we need to be separating ourselves from and calling out. And the church has failed in this. I will tell you that right now. The church is absolutely culpable in this. The judgment that's coming upon us is is God's judgment because of God's God's people and their failure to weed out and have good character. I'm telling you, it's not going to be fun. Proverbs 8, 14, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding and the power is mine. To put God first means to put others ahead of your own needs. So this whole thing about I'm not happy, The reason people are not happy is because there's nothing in this life that can make them happy except the Lord God Almighty. And then when we work for others, then he blesses us through them and the things that we do. But when we're hating and separating and and driving down and, you know, I, I, how many other people in this country are going to be beside themselves because their child is going to not have the education and the help that they need to grow and to prosper because of the people that we put into office are going to cut everything. I think that we only see the tip of the iceberg. And people that think they are insulated uh, from this it's like, you know, people that are going to lose all their health insurance uh, because they're going to try to remove the uh, Affordable Care Act. And then people with pre-existing conditions uh, won't be able to get insurance at any cost. 
because insurance companies don't want to pay. What are we going to do with that? Unintended consequences for putting people with no character in positions they should never be in. That's what scripture tells us quite clearly. You know, Nehemiah came to the point where he was beside himself. Nehemiah came to the point where he's like, this, is, this was my sin, Lord, and my failure. And there will be a reckoning that comes upon us that we will understand. I should have done more. I should have done the right thing. I, this is not what it, I intended, but character. It's important. It's important. Not only the character we have, but the character that, that we reflect with the people that we support. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 14 and 15. It was for this he called you through the gospel, that you may gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught, whether by word of mouth or by letter from us. Hmm. You see, what we have is a vacuum uh, at the church, we have at, at, at the teaching level of the church, there is a vacuum that has been replaced by political pundits. And so it's no more about what is right and what is true and what the Lord has taught and that we should have compassion and we should, we should love one another and be there for one another. And instead, it's become an arm of a political movement that then is now segregate, divide, conquer, push out. Uh, you know, but you know, <laughs> if we're if we're standing on Scripture, we're standing on God's word. Philippians four five. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. I see the complete opposite. The complete opposite. Ephesians five one. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Colossians 3 9. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his old deeds. But what if that's who they are? What if that's their character? And we see it and we know it. Well, they only lied to, to them. I, I'm different, right? I'm a supporter. That, that, you know, he's not lying to me. No, when people lie, they lie to everyone. And including they lie to themselves in thinking that they're doing the right thing, right? I'm okay. I'm the good guy. You know, all we have to do is open up scripture and look at it and hold it up to the people around us. And you'll be able to tell exactly who they are. Ephesians 4.32 and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Be kind, be gentle, tender-hearted. Is that who we see? Is that what we see? The mother that called me up crying about her son, her special needs son, is no longer going to get the services that he needs to survive and to grow. But that's what she chose. I mean, what do we do with this? When, when people wholeheartedly go against their own interests, not in one thing, in everything. Because the church has, has, has no voice anymore. They don't talk about God anymore. They talk about politics. Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive anyone of any complaint that you have against them. Forgive as the Lord has also forgiven you. Humility, kindness, patience. You see, 
we have forgotten all about what love means. Because that's not what we hear anymore. We hear that it's someone else's fault everything's going wrong. We hear that it's these people that are doing it. We need to hate them. We need to get rid of them. Everything's on them. When in fact, the problem is us. We have become problem creators instead of problem solvers. And the easiest way to unburden you, yourself, is to blame it on somebody else, which has been happening from the beginning of time, from the beginning of mankind. Have we learned nothing? Do we not understand anything? And what's the one thing that drives, drives most things? Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, people that, people that hang their own self-worth on how much money they have and brag about the amount of money then that they can do it better and no one else can do it and they're perfect, Believers and church people should run from those people because they only have their own self-interest in mind. And what's that say about us when we don't and when we don't call it out? When there's more important things than material things. You know, Nehemiah came to the understanding that, that he was complicit in this. And that the destruction that happened to Jerusalem and, and his city and his people who were in such dire straits was because of his lack of character and his unwillingness to do the right thing and to stand up for what was right. Boy, we are right there with him. You know, you know, I made a point this year not to get crazy about this. And you know what? I was wrong. I should have called it out as it was going on, and I, sh I should have talked about it more. Because when we don't, we're just as guilty. We're just as complicit. Just like Nehemiah. He just kept quiet and went along with it because he was not the big cheese. And then he realized, I had a part in this. Let's go over to 1 John 2, verse 15 verse through 17. And let's realize one thing. And let's understand one thing. God calls us to be a certain way. And he calls us to look at the world with a hands-off view, right? To be involved in a certain extent, but then not be consumed by worldly things. First John 2. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see what's happening? You see what God's telling us? See what he's trying to say? When things of this world take the place of God, take the God of God the Father, and people have done it, right? It's, it's become about what they want and what they believe. And, you know, we've been, someone actually told me this. The church has been too kind for too long. I was absolutely floored because the one thing that the church is called to be is kind. And when that is replaced by worldly things, such as hate, bigotry, racism, right? Where's that put us? 
for all that the world for all that is in the world the desires of the flesh the desires of the eyed and pride of life is not from the father but it is from the world i want i need it's their fault i didn't do it they did it we need to do this we need to get rid of them we need to punish this sound familiar and the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. See, to stand on true character, not our character, but the character God has shown us, that we should love when we, when, when we shouldn't, we should care when we shouldn't, we should, you know, if it doesn't directly affect me, doesn't mean that I shouldn't get involved in it and help fix the problem. You know, how do you how, how do we how do we deal with people that are just so filled with hate and anger and want to you know listen uh, you know everyone around the world is dealing with hyperinflation everyone around the world is 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 dealing with high costs uh, most of them higher than us uh, what do what do we do with people that that can't see a big picture that just I don't understand. He'll push aside all character and then be surprised and then be surprised you know as you guys know I've been I've been struggling greatly because I can't understand people that I know and that I love would do this to us and I understand I do. I get it. I get it. There, there, there are people out there that just thrive on hate. But there should be more of us that don't. And that's the part I don't understand. The part I don't get. You know, I, I've decided to make some major changes. And... Uh, you know, I'm hopeful God will show me the way. Um, I've relented and, and, and started doing the Sunday morning uh, service again because so many people called and asked for it. Uh, but I, I have to teach what I think is right, and, and I have to teach what I think needs to be taught. Um, next week, I, I, I we're going to go into the book of Philippians. I think it's it's, you know, Philippians is a good study. I think it'll be appropriate uh, to reset our hearts and our minds and to get out of this uh, cycle that most people are in right now where it's, you know, um, you know, hate, hate is not the answer. Uh, division is not the answer. Um, I hope that God wakes up the church. I really do. Uh, we need the church. We need the church right now, and it is it is absolutely absent. And um, you know, as you can tell, I, I I'm a compassionate guy. I really I really care about people, and uh, you know, I find it hard to keep working for people when they uh, when they do things that go against their own self interest and the self interest of all those around them. And that's one thing that I've been struggling with. And, uh, you know, compassion is a real two-edged sword. And uh, so you feel deeply, you're hurt deeply, and uh, I'd ask for some prayers for just, you know, whatever direction that this is going to go in. Um, I'm, you know, I just want to tell you guys, I love all you guys, and, 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 you know, we will make it through. All right, so next week we'll get back into it. Uh, Philippians, go ahead and read ahead, chapter 1, and then uh, we'll get into there. Listen, you all have a great week, all right? And uh, God bless. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we can come together and understand uh, what character means and 
what you have explained to us and you have shown us with the love that you have given us. You didn't blame anything on us. You didn't say it was all our fault. You just said, come and let's fix it. But Lord, I pray that all those out there would just fix it. Fix their heart. Fix their mind. Let them put forth understanding that character and qualities that we have in people that we support are most important. That says that the kind of people that we are down deep. So Lord, I pray that you would be with us all. Your hedge of protection would be around us. May it always be about you and our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in Christ's name that we pray and all God's people said, Amen. All right, y'all. I will see you guys uh, next Sunday. All right, take care.